Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to tonight's Bible reading and study. This is Pastor Robbins with the Virtual Body of Christ Church. Uh, before we get started, we're going to lift up in prayer. Uh, we need to, uh, again tonight, lift up in prayer for Iceman's brother and his brother's wife. Uh, he is in ICU and she has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. So again, we want to lift them up, anointing them with whole, uh, the holy oil coming together. Um, as the word says, the elders of the church coming together uh, with the um, laying on of hands and the anointing with the holy oil and proclaiming pe uh, healing in the name of Jesus Christ. So um, we have a few more that's been added to the list. Uh, our prayer list, so we want to continue to remember them, fight their downs, and uh, again, the um, uh, Brown family, keep uh, them in your prayers, the funeral is set for Saturday afternoon, so again, we want to uh, lift up to them peace, lift them up unto God for peace. So, uh, during their time of grief. So again, if there's anybody that has anything that's on their heart, souls, minds, or conscience that they want to pray for, uh, pray for it now, lifting it together with us. And um, just let us know. We can add anyone we need to to the prayer list. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, first of all, to thank you for each and everything you've done through each and every one of us' lives. We want to thank you for the ability to come together as brothers and sisters and as your ministers unto our local communities, Heavenly Father, to allow us to come together each and every night, obedient unto you, Heavenly Father remaining in your word and being accountable to one another. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Heavenly Father, <coughs> for allowing us to not only come together virtually, but come together physically. For either we have already met each other physically, or we will soon be coming together with a portion of us physically so that we can become closer to one another so that we can get to know one another as you proclaim each and every one of us need to do bringing the bride together Heavenly Father as one so that it brings glory unto the husband unto Jesus Christ our high priest and in turn, bringing glory unto you, Heavenly Father, looking to where you are working at and being included in showing your light into a lost and dying world. And we lift up to you together, Heavenly Father, for we come together as one, this body, placing our hands upon our brother and sister, the one that is in the ICU, Heavenly Father, and the one that's been diagnosed with terminal cancer. We place our hands upon them, Heavenly Father, together as the elders of this body, as the faithful of this body, Heavenly Father, as the faithful unto you, the husband. We place our hands upon these bodies, Heavenly Father, anointing them with the holy oil, <clears throat> covering them with the holy oil and covering them up in fervent prayer, Heavenly Father, proclaiming in the name of Jesus Christ healing, miraculous healing, Heavenly Father, in your name. For they are your children and we proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ that healing. And we pray for peace for our brother Iceman, the peace that is beyond all, beyond all understanding, Heavenly Father. As he battles right now 
with his love for his brother and his sister and his worries for them. And as he too was praying with us tonight, Heavenly Father, lifting them up, for he has lost many through this past year. And he is grieving tremendously, and we ask for the peace that is beyond all understanding to our brother Iceman. And we ask for the provisions and the protection and the traveling mercies, Heavenly Father, as he is traveling across the country, ministering to those who are lost in this world. And we pray for his spiritual provision as well as his physical provision, nourishing him as he nourishes others in you, Heavenly Father. And again, we pray and place our hands in the holy oil upon him. And we lift up each and every one coming together, Heavenly Father. We lift up each and every one that's on our prayer list. For we pro proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ healing for Sister Robin and Sister Vesta. For Sister T and Brother Frank. And Brother Frank's daughter, Heavenly Father. And for Brother Dano. And for Brother Terry. And for Brother Larry, Heavenly Father, and for Brother <clears throat> W.A. And all of those out there, Heavenly Father, these bikers downs that are on our prayer list and these others that are been in accidents and these others that are waiting for surgery. Sister Miko's husband, Brother Larry, as he waits for his surgery. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for healing in their bodies, Heavenly Father. Healing of their afflictions. So that they may soon get back to your work. The work and the purpose that you have for them. For we know you are working because we've seen the miraculous signs that you have given us, Heavenly Father. <clears throat> The signs of your work in Sister Vesta and Brother Frank, Heavenly Father. And Brother Frank's mother, as you have kept her safe from this pestilence. <coughs> Again, you have showed us all these miraculous signs, but we continue to lift them up, Heavenly Father, proclaiming in the name of Jesus Christ for their healing. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for peace, Heavenly Father, for Sister Miko, for Sister Cindy, for Brother Frank's wife, for Brother Frank's sisters, for Sheila, Larry's wife, Heavenly Father, as they support their husbands, as they Support their loved ones. Brother Iceman, Heavenly Father, we lift all of these up for peace. The peace to know that you are working and that you are in control. And when we proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ, as Jesus told the disciples, go out and do these things in my name. Again, we are proclaiming in the name of Jesus Christ these healings and these, uh, this peace. And we pray it for Sister Rhonda's daughter, Heavenly Father, as she fights addiction. And for all of those out there, Heavenly Father, that are fighting addiction. Take these addictions away, Heavenly Father. And as they go through the bodily afflictions, Heavenly Father, from coming off of these, addictions that you take away any pain that they have and you use each and every one of us to show them love the love of Jesus Christ and God the Father being there to support them in their battle Heavenly Father keeping them strong showing them the way, the truth, and the life which is through you, Heavenly Father, ministering to them 
and lifting them up, being there for them each and every day as they battle these addictions. And we pray for provision, Heavenly Father, for each one of these that are supporting their spouses. And that you give them peace, but we also pray for provision. For they struggle each and every day to provide for their families, but we ask for their provision, Heavenly Father, the provision that can come from you, from your peace. The peace that comes from them knowing that the Heavenly Father is providing for each and every one of their needs. For your word says, Heavenly Father, if I provide for the animals of the uh, air, land, and sea, how much more will I provide for those who are created in my image? And again, we lift them up for provision, Heavenly Father, and continued protection <clears throat> and biblical discernment, Heavenly Father, for each and every one, being obedient and faithful unto you, increasing their hope by remaining within that peace, that peace that is beyond all understanding, and that faith that is of a mustard seed, which has the ability to move mountains uh, because we proclaim it in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and as your word promises, when we proclaim it in the name of Jesus Christ, those things will be done. For we pray for your wisdom, Heavenly Father. Your provision your discernment, your protection, your peace, your healing. For you are the great shepherd. And we pray that each and every person listening in the night, Heavenly Father, that they have come before you, cleansing themselves, uh, confessing their sins, Heavenly Father, and emptying themselves and allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell within them so that as your word speaks tonight that the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit will be revealed each and every thing in which you desire for them to know that your word speaks to them Heavenly Father and can give them the peace and the guidance as they go out through their ministries in their local communities, Heavenly Father, showing your light into a lost and dying world. And as your vessel approaches your altar, Heavenly Father, again, confessing any sins or any wrongdoings I may have committed, Humbling myself unto you, recognizing that there is nothing possible unless it is through you. And allowing the Holy Spirit to enter in so that your word will ring true. And not the word of your vessel. That the Holy Spirit speaks to each and every one and guides each and every one in your word. Your undeniable truth, Heavenly Father. For it is all these things we bring unto you in the name of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. <coughs> September 8th, not lost in the crowd. Luke 19, 5. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down because today I must stay at your house. In our large world, it's easy to feel that we are nothing more than an insignificant speck in the midst of a multitude. Our world tends to depersonalize us, seeking to make us like everyone else. 
But God loves us in specific ways that are particular to us. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to fulfill his assignment on the cross. The multitudes thronged, thronged around him in such numbers that the diminutive Zacchaeus could not see Jesus unless he climbed a tree. Zacchaeus would have would have been satisfied simply to catch a glimpse of the great teacher. But Jesus stopped, turned, and looked directly at him. In that moment, Zacchaeus was obvious to the crowd around him. Thus began a special time with Jesus that radically changed his life. Jesus will relate to you in ways that are unique to you. He knows your past. He knows what you will face in the future because he knows everything about you. His word to you will perfectly fit the circumstances of your life. You may be in a group of Christians who are listening to God's word and you may hear things about him that no one else hears. Don't become frustrated with others if they do not, if they are not as excited about a truth from God as you are. Don't be impatient with them if they are not implementing God's word in their lives exactly as you are. God will personalize his word to you. He will relate to each of you, each of your friends in a way that specifically meets their needs as well. Again, brothers and sisters, I think about after reading this, the conversation that me and a gentleman had last night, or either Friday night, can't remember which one it was. <coughs> but we was talking about physical attributes, attributes. And the conversation came up from my wife and her friend about me that one night sitting and reading God's word and praying and being barefoot and my toes wiggling. And I was explaining to him that I've had leg issues from working in the fire department and in the oil refinery, crawling around on my knees and all. And I went to the doctor. And I'll never forget this. The doctor's first notification of me was, you have hammer toes which generally result in severe back issues. But the odd thing is that you have a high arch on your foot, which people with high arches have, good, have uh, no back problems. So they kind of counteract each other. And we were discussing how people are different God created each and every one of us different. There are even people out there that look similar. For when I left a job site this afternoon going from one to another, I noticed a young lady who waved at me on my way out of the neighborhood. And she looked from a distance just like a sister of mine, Rhonda. If I would have not known any better, I would have swore that was Rhonda out cutting grass in that yard. But again, there are little different attributes, even in those that look the same. <clears throat> Just like twins, identical twins born at birth, there is something different about them. The smallest little thing could be the way that they hold their lips, could be the way that they, their hair flows, could be a slight different tint, uh, uh, tinting of their hair, or any numerous things that could <coughs> reveal a difference between us all. But that's what makes us unique, and that's what makes us great. 
For like a snowflake, no single snowflake is alike. For each snowflake, and at all of the snowflakes that fall, and they're so small, you can't see the details unless it's under a microscope. And you see the billions upon billions and trillions and zillions and quadrillions and all of these other little snowflakes that fall everywhere. But yet, each one of them have a little difference. But that's what makes this so unique. But yet, God noticed, Christ noticed in this crowd. This crowd of people which Zacchaeus would have been so happy, so ecstatic, just to get a glimpse of Jesus Christ. He would have been happy with that. <coughs> like the time whenever I introduced my son when he was smaller to a wrestler. And he walked up and I said, do you know who this is, Thomas? And he looked up and he goes, our oh, truth. You know, he was so excited. You could see the shine in his eyes, the sparkle in his eyes, the smile on his face. <coughs> I can see this with Zacchaeus. I can see him seeing Christ and looking up at him and saying, Jesus. The shine in his eyes, just to get a glimpse of him. But to Zacchaeus' astoundment, Jesus pointed him out. With all the large crowd there, the single insignificant little man <coughs> who had to climb a tree just so he could get a glimpse because he was so small, he was drowned in the crowd. And yet Christ pointed him out. In our large world today, brothers and sisters, do you feel like that insignificant little person? Do you feel like what difference am I going to make? I'm just one person. How is my prayers going to be lifted up? How is my prayers going to make any difference? But as Jesus pointed out Zacchaeus in the small crowd, the little man so too God hears your prayers. And just like with the disciples, and he told them, go out in my name. And if you proclaim it in my name, it will be done. From these 12. In the multitude of people, these 12 who people looked at, the crowd looked at as so unworthy, coming from the lowliest of jobs, the lowliest of areas. When proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ, those things will be expounded and will sound over all of the crowd. The one little person praying, proclaiming in the name of Jesus Christ, delivering the fruit of the Spirit, nourishing the Spirit-filled bodies throughout this lost and dying world. He may not see it as Zacchaeus. He or she may not see it then. But when they get to heaven, <coughs> they'll 
those treasures, those mighty things that are done, those ones that they prayed for. will come running to them saying thank you. Thank you for proclaiming to me the light. For if it was not for you, I would not be here. Again, I've used this illustration before and I'm going to leave you with this before we go into Isaiah 8, reading Isaiah 8. The little man in Australia, Sydney, Australia, little, small, frail, elderly man in his retirement years, for 20 years, every day he stood outside in the square, and everyone he met that came his way, he would hand them a track and ask them the simple question. If you died today, would you go to heaven? And many, many threw it in the trash. But unbeknownst to him, until a couple of weeks or a couple of days before he passes, he is introduced, and in, uh, a gentleman from London, from England, comes to visit him who had been traveling throughout the world and heard the same testimony of many people who come to the Lord because of a simple man in Australia who handed a track and said, if you died today, would you go to heaven? For those who said that testimony and gave that testimony of that little man had become great spiritual leaders, chaplains, priests throughout the entire world, spanning countless continents and countries. So again, brothers and sisters, don't get lost in the crowd. Don't let the crowd and your invisibleness or what you perceive as your invisibleness discourage you. For when you pray and you go to the Lord and you lift up to the Lord with humble heart, Confessing your sins so that he can hear you. It's as if he can hear you by yourself. It's as if he can hear you and just you. That's how clear your prayers are to him. And every time you go out and you do the littlest things to show the love of Christ and the love of the Father, the love <coughs> unto a lost and dying world, if it's no more than handing out a Bible, God's Word, or, the tra or a track, and saying, if you died today, would you go to heaven? That little act will be multiplied beyond all comparison. So again, brothers and sisters, do not get lost in the crowd. Isaiah chapter 8, the coming Assyrian invasion. Then the Lord said to me, take a large piece of parchment and write on it with an ordinary pen, Maher Shalala Hasha Baz. I have appointed trustworthy witnesses, the priest Uriah and Zechariah's son of Jebekah, 
Jebekiah, Jebekiah. I was the, I was then intimate with the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. The Lord said to me, Name him Maher Shalala Hashbazah Baz. For before the boy knows how to call father or mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria will be carried off to the king of Assyria. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me again because the people rejected the slowly flowing water of Shal Shil Shiola and rejoiced with Rezin and the son of Merlot Remala. The Lord will certainly bring against them the mighty rushing water of the Euphrates River and the king of Assyria in all his glory. It will overflow its channels and spill over its bank. It will pour into Judah, flood over it, and sweep through, reaching up to the neck. And its flooded banks will fill your entire land. Emmanuel, band together, people, and be broken. Pay attention, all you distant lands. Prepare for war and be broken. Prepare for war and be broken. Devise a plan. It will fail. Make a prediction. It will not happen. For God is with us. The Lord of armies, the only refuge. For this is what the Lord said to me with great power to keep me from going the way of this people. Do not call anything a con conspiracy. These people say it's a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not tremble. Do not be terrified. For are you... Do not be terrified. You are to regard only the Lord of armies as holy. Only as should be feared. Only he should be held in awe. He will be a sanctuary. But for the two houses of Israel... He will be a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over and a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many will stumble, stumble over these. They will fall and be broken. They will be snared and captured. Bind up the testimony. Seal up the instruction among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will wait for him. Here I am with the children of the Lord has given me to be a sign and wonders in Israel from the Lord of armies who dwell on Mount Zion. When they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the spirits who chirp and mutter, Shouldn't a person inquire of their God? <coughs> Shouldn't they inquire the, should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? Go to God's instruction and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, they will not be drawn for them. Dawn for they will there will be no dawn for them. They will wander through their land, dejected and hungry. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward, will curse their king and their God. They will look toward the earth and see only distress, darkness, and the gloom of affliction. And they will be driven into thick darkness. Again, brothers and sisters, I'm reminded of two things in this verse, in this chapter. Number one, band together, people, and be broken. Pay attention 
all you distant lands. Prepare for war and be broken. Prepare for war and be broken. Devise a plan. It will fail. Make a prediction. It will not happen. For God is with us. Again, prepare for war and be broken. Be broken in the Lord. For again, our refuge is in the Lord of armies. For Isaiah says here, Here I am with the children of the Lord. With the children the Lord has given me to be a sign of wonders in Israel from the Lord of armies who dwell on Mount Zion. Prepare for war and be broken. Dwell in the refuge of Mount Zion. For today, <coughs> we see the calamity of the world and we see the turning of the world from God, the one and only true God. For they speak and they search for answers from mediums and spiritualists. But yet what the mediums and spiritualists say do not match up with the word of God. But the word of God matches up with the circumstances that we are in today. And we can see how God's word comes together with our circumstances today. For when they cry, cry out to God, <coughs> he will not hear them. They will wander through the land dejected and hungry. When they are famished, they will become enraged and, look, and looking upward will curse the king and their God. They will look toward the earth and see only distress, darkness, and the gloom of affliction. And they will be driven into the thick darkness. Again, brothers and sisters, God is calling for there is nothing new under the sun. For what is happening in the time of Isaiah to Judah and Israel is happening today. The Lord spoke. Because these people rejected God, <clears throat> the Lord will certainly bring against them. And he broke against them and he flooded their land and their riches were given over to Assyria and they were brought into the captivity as many numerous times before. And what do we see today? We see people against God. And God is turning his back. But his faithful few, his faithful ones who reside in him, who reside in Mount Zion, come together and pray, calling for all of his people who are called by his name. To humble, him, humble themselves, confess their sins, start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The priests, the teachers, the preachers, the ones who are out there preaching false prophecies and false falsehoods of the word. Humbling their self, call for their humbleness. And they're turning from their trespasses, revealing the word of God and its truths. For we have refuge in the Lord. And our voices, though we are one together, we are mighty. And with God's army going before us, for those who turn their back will be sent to Sheol. And we pray for a great revival, a returning, a repentance of God's people. 
who are called by his name to humble themselves unto the Lord. For again, the prayer of the one that is not lost in the crowd is as mighty as the many that seek refuge in Mount Zion who seek refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every word that's come for your scriptures. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for a great revival of this land and a returning of your people and your people once revived go out and continue to speak your truth, not false prophecies, but your truth unto a lost and dying world. And no matter if it's even one, for Heavenly Father, send me, I will go. I will go and tell your truths into a lost and dying world. But I know that I'm not alone, for I have a body that is with me, a body of many that are faithful and they pray up to you, Heavenly Father. And our body will join together with other bodies of God-fearing, Bible-preaching people. God-fearing people who will go out willingly and tell and show your light into a lost and dying world. For we may be few, but we have the army of you, Heavenly Father, going before us, just like the Israelites in Canaan. And we will not lose a single life. For you will defeat all of our enemies in the spirit world before us as we take up the whole armor of God and we pray humbling ourselves at all times realizing that apart from you Heavenly Father we can do nothing and again it is this unity and this preparedness for battle this brokenness as we prepare for battle that we bring up to you in the name of Jesus Christ to the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, the question last night, I experienced as my provider most meaningfully, when God provided what? Blank for me. As the Lord prompts me, I will tell this story to others. One way I need God to be my provider today is how? Blank. And we talked about how God, in for me, in this ministry, <coughs> Whenever I surrendered all, he provided all that is needed, and he will continue to provide, and I will proclaim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Providing every need. To fulfill our promises to take care of the widow, the child, and the poor. And the victory that we will have, for we will have victory, for God is our victory. As we prepare for battle, God is our victory. Well, today, brothers and sisters, the Lord is my banner. Another experience in the scripture reveals God's name as the Lord is my banner. Joshua and the Israelites were fighting the Amalekites 
Moses was overseeing the battle from a nearby, nearby mountain. While he held his hand up to God, the Israelites were victorious. When he let his hand down, they became a loot, began to lose. God defeated the Amalekites through Israel that day. And Moses built an altar and gave it the name, The Lord is my banner. A banner is the standard that goes out in front of an army of a tribe or nation to indicate who they represent. The Lord is my banner, says we are God's people. He is our God. Moses' uplifted hands gave constant glory to God, indicating that the battle was his and Israel was his. Israel came to know God in a better way that day as they realized anew, we are God's people. The Lord is our banner. Again, brothers and sisters, we have just talked about this, and it's amazing how God puts everything together. For as in Isaiah... Be broken, prepare for battle. Reside in Zion. <clears throat> for as long as Moses held up his hand, <coughs> the Israelites were winning. But when he dropped it, they would lose. For the people who reside in Zion... They will be victors, but those who do not will look up and curse God and look down at the barren land and become angry. And they will see the darkness that is to come. But there's something else that I want you to realize, brothers and sisters. And I believe that I had kind of hinted at this earlier we don't always see the victory in our lifetime for Isaiah spoke of the coming of Emmanuel 800 years before Christ came but he did not see Emmanuel he did not see the victory that comes through Jesus Christ We don't always see the victory. But as long as we remain faithful and we hold the Lord as our back banner ahead of us, we will be victors. Is the Lord your banner today? Can you see where God has gave you victory ahead of you? For me, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> again, our battle right now is to a lost and dying world. Our battle is of the spirit world, bringing our nation and the nations of the world that call God Father that were uh, founded upon the rock of Peter. The rock of Jesus Christ. They have turned to the flesh. And they are no longer the light into the world. And you see the things that's going on today. But we are proclaiming victory. And again, it might not be in our time. We might see the victory and we might not, but we must persevere. We must go forth with the Lord Jesus Christ as our banner, calling for his people who are called by his name to humble themselves and pray, be broken, prepare for battle.
Pray that God does not turn his head. God does not give these lands over to be desolate. That we remain in the banner, in the refuge of Zion, in the refuge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Proclaiming God the Father and Jesus Christ as our victors. For again, who do we have victory in? Our victory is in Jesus he is our banner. He is our high priest. He's the one that gave his life for each and every one of us. So that we, his children, can proclaim victory to a lost and dying world. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every word that comes from your scripture. We thank you for the revelation and the way that you speak and the way that you are bringing us together, Heavenly Father, to reside in you and to open our eyes so that we can recognize where you are speaking and where you are working at through your word and through our circumstances as we pray up to you, Heavenly Father, and as we become the bride, the church, the God-fearing church that is broken and is preparing for battle into a lost and dying world not settling for the fact that we have refuge but going out and showing your light so that those who will accept you Heavenly Father will too have victory over death and despair and Sheol and darkness Again, we lift up each and every name that is on our prayer list and we continually, fervently pray for each and every one, anointing them at all times, stretching out our hands, even if they're not physically with us, placing our hands on them, Heavenly Father, anointing them, praying over them, praying for your victory praying for your, the victory in you against their afflictions so that they may continue in battle against the devil and the princes and principalities of the spirit world as they attempt to destroy your creation. For it is all these things we bring praise, honor, and glory unto you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Again, yeah, thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming and joining us tonight. <coughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. We look forward to seeing each and every one of you then. Again, we'll continue to pray for each and every one of you. Remember, we have the revival coming up. Hopefully after this weekend I'll have everything situated and we'll be able to post the exact schedule. And uh, also um, the return, there has been a Friday night added to it from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday night for the next generation. And uh, there's a, the daytime runs 9 to 5 and then from 6 to 9, there's going to be an evening service on Saturday. So again, uh, I have this information posted on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, for those who are going, please go in and register with our group. So because of, um, I need to get with Sister Robin. I'm thinking we're probably going to meet up. Uh, there were uh, 77 meets 81. I think that would be the best place for us to meet up. There's a love truck stop right near there. I was looking at it earlier, but I will discuss that with Sister Robin to see where everybody wants to meet up so we can ride in together. We'll be coming straight up 77 going to uh, 81. So again, um, from Charlotte. 
So again, brothers and sisters, go on there. If you're going, please register. Uh, it is free. Uh, you're not going to be turned away if you don't register. But again, registering with our group in the uh, virtual body of Christ Church and the um, um, code there that matches up is uh, all that information is on there. So please go and register so that uh, you will also be able to go in and view all of the activities that will be going on the 25th through the 27th. Again, love y'all. God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Robin said, I know where it is. I guess you come up. The meeting location.